Welcome to Family Law Talk. Family Law Talk. Presented by Kirk Stangy of Stangy Law Firm, PC. With offices in the Midwest. Stangy Law Firm is a family law firm. Now, here's your host, Kirk Stangy. Welcome to Family Law Talk. We have an interesting topic today. The topic today deals with modifications, and specifically the topic is do both parties have to agree to a modification for a modification to take place? So let's go ahead and break down the topic and go through it in a little bit more detail because this is a common question. It's a question that many who've gone through a divorce, a paternity case, or other family law matter have, and they want to know uh, is, is a modification possible? In other words, in terms of child custody, child support, or spousal support, can there be a modification? Can there be a change? And can that happen specifically if one party doesn't want a modification? In other words, they want things to stay the same. And so look, to sort of break this down in more detail, Ultimately, to show uh, the required elements of a modification, you know, this is going to vary by state. And so it's important for any individual going through a family law case, specifically a modification, that they talk to a family lawyer who's licensed and competent to practice law in their jurisdiction because there could be nuances, there could be quirks, there could be certain things that particular judges are looking for. And in some states, there's statutory requirements that may need to be met as well for a modification. But look, in a very general sense, can a modification be had if one party doesn't want the modification or perhaps maybe both of them um, don't want the modification in a specific sense? And and so look, uh, ultimately, Uh, for a modification to take place, one or both of the parties does need to file a motion to modify with the court. Uh, In some jurisdictions, it could be called a petition to modify. Again, uh, this can vary by state. Where I predominantly practice in Missouri, we refer to these as motions to modify. Um, But in a general sense, what parties have to show uh, in most states is that there's a change of circumstance of a substantial and continuing basis sufficient Uh, to warrant a modification of either child custody, child support, or spousal maintenance. It could be, in a particular case, uh, that individual is seeking a modification to one of these items, maybe two of them. In other cases, it could be all three in specific instances as well. Um, And so there could be some variant there. But to to show uh, the required uh, uh, evidence, if you will, to get a modification, what a party has to show is that there's a change of circumstance of a substantial and continuing basis. So in terms of child support, what might be some specific things that an individual might be able to show in order to warrant a change in child support? Look, it could be uh, somebody's income has gone up, right? They get a pay raise, uh, something to that extent, a a new job. Uh, On the flip end, somebody seeking uh, to lower child support might uh, show to the court that they've lost their job. Uh, Perhaps they've gotten a new job and maybe it pays less uh, than the job before. So you're talking about income changes uh, being a big big factor in child support modification cases. Um, It could be a change in terms of the needs of the kids, right? Um, It could be a need for daycare, uh, perhaps a private school, could have something to do with college. Uh, Perhaps there could be special needs. Um, that uh, are now there that maybe weren't there before and that these all constitute uh, changes of circumstances sufficient um, to warrant a change in child support. Um, So you see, this can be very fact-driven and and the facts can show uh, whether or not there's been a change of circumstances of a substantial and continuing basis. So again, it's important to break this down into the two components too, which is one, a change of circumstance And then two, it's got to be of a substantial and continuing basis. So if it's something temporary, if it's something uh, that might not be long lasting, then perhaps a modification uh, may not uh, ultimately uh, be ordered in the case. So again, change of circumstance, substantial and continuing basis. In terms of spousal maintenance, what what might uh, have taken place in order to warrant a change in spousal maintenance? Well, look, this could be lots of things. Uh, that could be changes of circumstances. Again, it could be an increase of income, could be a decrease in income. Uh, it could be uh, that a party's expenses have gone up. In other words, their reasonable needs. Uh, it could be uh, that somebody's needs have lowered. 
Um, it could be a circumstance where maybe somebody who wasn't able to get a job has maybe now gone back to college and now they're able to get a job. So again, these kinds of changes could perhaps warrant uh, a change in spousal maintenance. Now, in terms of spousal maintenance, there could be specific things uh, that could maybe uh, result in some states in terms of uh, ch- uh, spousal maintenance, in terms of it being terminated, like a party gets remarried, uh, maybe they're cohabitating with somebody, and that cohabitation is tantamount to marriage, uh, something to that effect. Uh, some maintenance awards also might be for specific time limits, so a certain number of years, so perhaps uh, the time limit is now passed, and that warrants uh, uh, no more spousal maintenance to be paid. But again, you're looking at changes of circumstances of a substantial and continuing basis. In terms of child custody, look, it could really run the gamma in terms of the types of things um, that ultimately uh, uh, might uh, necessitate uh, a change uh, in terms of child custody, okay? could be that one party is relocated far away, uh, something to that extent. Uh, it could be a circumstance... Um, uh, where the kids' wishes have perhaps come into account. Maybe what the kids wanted before might be different today. Now, again, uh, the wishes of the children uh, sometimes taken into effect. Sometimes courts are not that concerned with it, particularly if they think the motivations uh, of, of a child to be with one parent or the other might not be uh, reasonable, let's say. Um, it could be the educational needs of the kids have changed, and the, and the court finds maybe one parent is better able to meet those educational needs uh, it could be the fitness of the parents. It could be a circumstance where maybe uh, a substance abuse problem uh, is taking place. It could be a circumstance uh, where mental health has now come into the picture in terms of some kind of uh, change uh, when that was not the case before. Um, so all of that could result uh, in changes that could justify uh, a child custody there too. So look, to go back to the original question, uh, do both parties have to agree uh, for a modification to take place? No, both parties don't have to agree. That said, somebody's got to file a motion or somebody's got to file a petition with the court in order to justify uh, a modification. Um, at that point, um, then the other party can agree to the modification or not agree. And so what happens if uh, one party requests a modification and the other party doesn't agree Uh, That's a common question that lots of individuals have as well. Well, look, in those circumstances, modifications sort of take on uh, a whole new litigation. So for a lot of parties, it may feel like uh, they're going through the divorce or maybe the original paternity case all over again. So look, you could be talking about discovery having to take place. So interrogatories, requests for production. Uh, It could be a circumstance where depositions are needed of the parties, uh, maybe witnesses, um, right? Could be a circumstance uh, where uh, records are needed, so subpoenas need to be uh, issued. Um, guardian ad litems in terms of child custody can oftentimes um, uh, need to be appointed. You know, tax returns might be needed. Uh, W-2s, other income information. Uh, could be a, a circumstance where evidence is needed on expenses um, if we're talking about spousal maintenance. Um, in terms of cohabitation, proof might be needed of that cohabitation. I've seen lots of cases through the years where, um, you know, that's even in dispute. Um, so it becomes a, um, a litigated issue in terms of somebody's actually cohabitating or whether or not somebody just periodically spends the night at somebody else's house. And so that could be litigated in these maintenance cases as well. And so ultimately, who decides if a modification is going to take place if there's not an agreement? Well, that would be the judge. And so the judge would have to look at the testimony, would have to look at the evidence, and would ultimately have to come to a determination on whether or not uh, a sufficient basis has been made for a modification. And again, take that back to the general standard of a change of circumstance of a substantial and continuing basis. So a judge has to decide that. And, and look, some judges uh, may opt when hearing a case to modify a prior judgment. Uh, Some judges may find that there's not enough evidence uh, sufficient to warrant a modification. In other words, there is not a change of circumstance of a substantial and continuing basis. Keep this in mind as well, folks. A a lot of you all might be listening in different states. And look, in different states, uh, there could be specific uh, requirements in terms of, and look, you want to speak to a lawyer who's licensed and competent to practice law in your jurisdiction. 
Um, but you might only be able to file a modification action so often. Or you may need to show a change in child support calculations of a certain percentage in order to warrant a modification. Okay, and so it's really important uh, that, that the listeners out there know that. And so when you're talking about child support in particular, it's important to go through child support calculations with a lawyer and make sure uh, that there is a change that meets the legal requirements of the state in which you're in. And so that is very important before undertaking a modification. But just know, look, if parties can agree on a modification, it can be simple and easy, just like a simple and easy uncontested divorce. But where one party doesn't agree, um, look, uh, it can be complex and it can be time consuming and it can be like going through the divorce or paternity case again. And so uh, it's definitely important to keep that in mind if you're thinking about undertaking modification proceedings or if you've been served with paperwork uh, where uh, the other party is seeking a modification. So that is very, very important. OK, so again, the topic is, you know, modifications, uh, what happens where one party doesn't want a modification. And I think we've covered that pretty well here today. I will say as a follow up to the episode today, go on over to familylawheadquarters.com. We have an article uh, on that blog dated February 17th, 2021, and the title of the article is Do Both Parties Have to Agree to Modification? So as a follow-up to the episode today, go on over to familylawheadquarters.com and check out that article uh, for more information on this topic. Well, thanks for tuning in today. Stay tuned for our next episode on Family Law Talk coming up. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to Family Law Talk with Kirk Stange. Visit StangeLawFirm.com for more about today's topic or to put Stange Law Firm to work for your family today. The choice of a lawyer is an important decision that should not be based solely upon advertisements. Neither the Supreme Court of Missouri or Illinois reviews or approves certifying organizations or specialist designations. The information you obtain on this podcast is not, nor is it intended to be legal advice. You should contact an attorney for advice regarding your individual situation. We invite you to contact us and welcome your calls, letters, and electronic mail. Contacting us does not create an attorney-client relationship. Please do not send any confidential information to us until such time as an attorney-client relationship has been established. And finally, past results afford no guarantee of future results, and every case is different and must be judged on its own merits. Kirk Stange is responsible for the content. Principal Place of Business, 120 South Central Avenue, Suite 450, Clayton, Missouri, 63105. Kirk Stange is licensed in Missouri, Illinois, and Kansas. Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan, but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First Choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com slash renew to learn more. Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on chumbacasino.com. I looked over the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere, even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at chumbacasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's chumbacasino.com and live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. DTW, Revoid, we're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus.